Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be with you this morning as we reflect on the Word of God. And we'll be taking time to pray together. I'm going to read this morning from the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter 19. We read from verse 23 to verse 30. Matthew 19, reading from verses verse 23 to verse 30. Listen to the word of God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples hear this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses and brothers and sisters, or father or mother, or children, or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Just up to that point, may the Lord bless the reading of his word now and forever. Amen. Well, this reading in Matthew 19, 23 to 30, as I was going through it, the first thing that um, came to mind is who then can be saved? Maybe the very same question that the disciples asked themselves, of, they inquired of each other, that on the basis of what Jesus is saying, who then can be saved? Do you ever ask yourself that question? Or maybe, well, to put it simply, are you ever concerned uh, about your life beyond what we see now, beyond um, what we understand? Are you ever concerned about your salvation? Are you certain of your salvation? Do you ever contemplate your life beyond the life that you are living now? Your certainty about the glory, about your entry into the land of promise. Because I think at the heart of the text uh, that we have read this morning, it's it's a question of salvation, a question of being certain, a question in which we, we deal with what Jesus sees as the requirements that we need to fulfill in order to enter into the presence of God. But not only in terms of what needs to happen, but 
but also he opens up the promise. To whom does this promise of eternal life going to be to be given? Who are going to be beneficiaries of this? You will remember that the text starts with a conversation that, that has taken place. Uh, it's Jesus uh, going through the requirements of what needs to be done and uh, speaking unto his disciples. And so he starts by, by mentioning that, listen to what Matthew 19, 23 says, Jesus answered, then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We, we know that he, he starts by saying here in the portion that we have read that it will be difficult for the rich person to enter into the kingdom. And then to complicate matters, he, uh, he said that then it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Difficult. I think the standard is set quite high and, and things that we think are ordinarily impossible. When the disciples hear this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Well, that is the question that I grapple with. And, and I think it's something that we have to consistently ask ourselves. We, we have to grapple in our lives with, with that question as well. How? The question of salvation and the certainty about your salvation. And so he, he has spoken about things that are impossible. It is, it is not possible for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And then, as they were grappling and asking themselves these impossibilities that Jesus deals with, he then explained that for men, we see obstacles always. For men, we, we are quick to say that it cannot be done. For men, it is quite easier to hang in the tower. We, we don't like to struggle with things. We, we don't like to be engaged in things that the results will not be convincing because the results will always put us on the, on the side of people who are unable to reach particular goals, people who are not particular to achieve things uh, because, because when things are appear to be impossible, it is quite easy to quit. And so he says that, remember that for men, things, all things seem to be tough and unachievable. Things are impossible for men. But, but for God, they are not. Because God is the God of the impossibilities. God is able to do things in places that we don't expect. God is able to redeem situations and address and redress situations even when those situations appear impossible. God always triumphs over circumstances and challenging times and difficult times when we think that we are dealing with mountains that are insurmountable. For God, it is possible. God can see us through over those. And then he says to them, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So, 
it's it's life of perseverance it's life of us holding tightly to the promises of god it is it is us understanding that we have to walk alongside jesus we have to be followers of jesus we have to walk with him because the stakes are high the promise that is given to us is huge it's something that even for that for us appear something that is that is unachievable jesus says that if you understand if you if you understand that perseverance your perseverance um, sticking with me walking with me doing my will listening to me and trying to live your life in accordance with the prescripts of god if you you are totally and fully surrendered sur you have surrendered your life to me the rewards are huge because not only are you part of what what i'm doing i guarantee you a place that you will you will sit with me on the 12 thrones looking and judging the 12 tribes of israel and maybe Peter had earlier said to him, but Lord, remember what we have done. Remember the sacrifices that we have done. We have left our, our jobs. We have left our families. We have left our, whatever we were doing to enable us to live and survive. We have given too much of ourselves. So what is our reward as we follow you? Have you ever asked that question? Because I know that I have and people have asked in in my ministry, as I interact with people, as I counsel people, I, I have had that many a times. People trying to understand what is the reward for following Jesus? What do I, what do I have in the process? And maybe we, we, we forget the huge benefit or the promise that God has given to us that we we will be with him that we will be with him I think for me quite one of the huge things my take in into this story of following but Jesus put it quite differently here he says every Everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, fathers, or mothers, or children, or fields for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. So, for following Jesus, for us as sticking it out, holding our course, being faithful to their call, obedient uh, servants who follow the master, who live in accordance with the will of the master, who live to glorify the master, who live to be a light in, into the world. Anyone who has done that, stand to get so much out of it hundred times what you have put in for anyone who has understood 
that Christ come first. Come first before anything. Be before the relations in this life, before the wealth that we have, and whatever we have accumulated. If we take the sum total of all those things and make a promise of saying that all these things are not going to be first in my life. Jesus is the first in my life. We are guaranteed to the use returns. Not only that, but eternal life as well. That we, we will live with God in glory. That we are the beneficiaries of the inheritance that is in heaven reserved for us. That your life will not come to end when we die here. We move into the presence of God once our life comes to an end here. And so this is the promise. And Jesus finished that portion um, 19 by saying there is an incredible reversal of things in the kingdom. Those who many of people who think that they are first will be surprised when they find themselves being the last in the queue. And those who have been considered as nothing right at the back will find themselves being the first in the queue. And, and this, a friend, is how Jesus want to help us to understand how the kingdom economy works. So, in your life, in your life, have a healthy relationship with what you have. What you have does not have to determine and shape your life. Your life needs to be shaped by God, by His precepts, by His will, so that we always live our lives seeking to align with the, God, with the will of God in, in things that we do, in our walk, in our speech, in our actions, and in our thoughts. So we allow God to take control of our lives, that God becomes the one who is in charge. And we follow, we follow obediently, we follow as people who have surrendered, we follow as people who want to please God, as people who want to live their lives for his glory, to honor him. And we, we commit to this. We, we really are committed to this. We are people who understand what the silence in the presence of God enables us to gain confidence in his company and in his presence in our lives and in the way he touches our lives. So that we are not concerned about anything. But our lives are deeply connected, deeply rooted in the God who can save us. And that when he saves us, there is nothing that is impossible. Nothing that can stand 
before him or nothing that he is unable to do. Because with God, everything is possible. And so when your salvation is held in the hands of someone that you can trust, someone that you know can overcome any obstacle that we face in life to bring you safe on the other side. It's a huge, huge blessing. Have a blessed, blessed week, friends. It's, it's, it's been such a joy to spend this time with you as we have reflected together on the word of God. God to bless you and strengthen you and embrace you because he loves you. Let us pray. Father, what a joy to know that we are special people before your throne. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that you held us tight in your hand, even in this turbulent and uncertain times in which we are living. Thank you, Father, that you stand high above any forces of evil that seek to take control of our lives and the world. Thank you, Father, that you stand at all in the midst of violence, in the midst of moral looseness, and as we see around us that um, standards are being lowered, thank you, Father, that even in the midst of this, your hand hold the world tight because you you are the creator. You are the beginning and you are the end. So Father, we, we pray for the fulfillment of, of your promise in our lives. As people who follow you, people who love you, people who serve you, people who live to bring glory to your name. People who want the world to see you, to see how your glory fills every, every corner of the earth. Thank you, Father, for your promise of a rescuing mission to save the planet and its people that you want to draw people to yourself so that as they come to yourself, they, they become inheritors of your promises. And so, Father, we, we think of people who are in position of authority. And sometimes they, uh, we see them turning the blind eye to, or even passively accepting patterns of behavior which are totally unacceptable as being offensive and contrary to your will. We think of how wars and divisions and hatred and superiority complex are sometimes um, held as so very close in the echelons of power. And so, Father, we, we pray for the world, we pray for the leaders in these in this difficult times where we see brokenness, death and darkness. We pray for hope and for your light to triumph over forces of darkness and pain and sadness. 
And so, Father, we, we pray that the church, the body of Christ, will always be a place of hope, that the church will be able to shine your light, to shine your glory into those dark corners of the earth. And that will, will bring hope. That it will always be ready to tell the hope that it has. Always give the reason for this hope that we have, the triumph over forces of darkness. Your ability to bring resurrection in the midst of death. And so, Father, we think of people who are not well, people who are struggling with health, people who are battling to make ends meet. We, we think of, of the needs of others. But above all, for them to realize that you are the provider, the alpha and the omega. So as we go into this week, Father, we know that we, we go with you, that you will keep us company, that you will bless us always. Thank you, Father, for people who have locked into this call. And I pray for each and every one of them. You know them, you love them, you care for them deeply. And so, Father, I, I release them into your care and pray that you will you will bless, that you will respond to each and every longing of their heart and hopes that they have. We pray this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Dear friends, thank you so much. I thank you for logging in. Thank you for being part of this call. I, I pray and speak life and blessing into you. God bless you and I know we will see one another soon. Have a great week. Bless you, friends. Bye.